Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to the book of Ezekiel, and we're going to do chapter 8. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Someone once asked me to do a commentary on the book of Ezekiel, but be honest with you, I don't think I know it well enough to do it. Uh, Ezekiel and Daniel are, in my opinion anyways, the two most difficult books in the Bible. Isaiah is not an easy one, but it's, I just, to me it just seems, I don't know, it seems like I have a better understanding Revelation, I don't think, is all that hard if you knew all the Old Testament symbolism. But, uh, you know, there's just parts that we're not going to understand until we actually see the end-time events unfold. But until that time, there are some things that shall be a mystery. And, uh, you know... <laughs> Even uh, even the prophets of old, sometimes they were writing things that they didn't understand. I mean, Daniel was told, uh, seal up, you know, seal it up until the end times. He asked him, oh, what's this mean? Uh, go your way, Daniel, seal up the words until the end. I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, it's not for you to know, Daniel. It's for the people that live in the end times. They'll be the ones. So, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 8. Uh, Ezekiel is a wild book. When you read uh, chapter 1, it talks about the throne of God, and of course, uh, the weirdos will say, oh, that was a UFO that came down from the sky, and everybody thought that was God, and blah, 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 and it's, you know... If you used to listen to uh, Coast to Coast AM radio or whatever, uh, yeah, no thanks. That was some weird stuff driving when I was driving cross country in a truck listening to Bible stuff. Sometimes, um, before George Norrie, what was it? Uh, I forget his name. But he did Coast to Coast. Sometimes he'd have a decent guest on, but uh, they were nothing when it came to Christians, they were nothing. Um, I forget his name. But, uh, yeah, one was talking about, uh, you know, the throne of God as being a UFO. Uh, I don't think so. No. But, hey, that's just me. What do I know? All right, Ezekiel, chapter 8. Art Bell, I had to look that up. Yeah, Art Bell and then uh, George Norrie. Uh, yeah, Art Bell, he was, yeah, that was some strange stuff. Uh, let's see, Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 1. Oh, I want to remind, uh, let everybody know, this chapter, um, uh, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah lived, were probably contemporaries. They probably lived around the same time period. And uh, this particular chapter, Ezekiel records one of the reasons why the Lord allowed Babylon to carry off Jerusalem. Now remember, the temple was built by Solomon so that they could honor the Lord. But let's see what they were doing instead. All right, Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, sixth year, sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me. So here it is, the leaders, right? 
that the hand of the Lord fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins, even downward, fire, and from his loins, even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate, that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. So they had some kind of an image here. I'm not exactly, I don't know what it is. Uh, basically, you know, it's basically like an idol. All right, so the seed of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. Now, what does the Bible say about jealous, jealousy? Exodus, Exodus 20 and verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Did you know God can be jealous? Oh, yeah. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity, or the sin, or the wickedness, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. This is what they're talking about with generational curses. Um, you know, these are people that hate the Lord. They're cursed to the third and fourth generation. Please don't argue with me. Argue with the Lord. I, I don't write this stuff. I don't make this stuff up. I, I'm just a reporter. Exodus 34, 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous. Ah, how come um, the Hebrew Roots people don't pick up on this? Why don't they call him Jealous? For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Deuteronomy 4.24 For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Are we getting the idea here? And then uh, Deuteronomy 5, 9 uh, talks about uh, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Oh, yeah. So, the image of jealousy. Verse 3, again. Ezekiel, and he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of mine head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me into the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. So this was some type of a false god worship thing. And behold, the glory of of the God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the, ent uh, in the entry. So here it is, one of the uh, an altar of the Lord, and they got some kind of a, an image. Um, so what does the Bible say about images? Well, a good place would be Revelation chapter 13. Now you got to understand something. King, I think it was King Solomon that said that there's nothing new under the sun. You know, what Satan does in the past, 
that works. He doesn't change the game plan for the future. If it worked in the past, it'll it'll probably work again in the future. You know, I liked I liked playing football, and uh, and I always uh, you know the coach always said, hey, when you got a game plan and it works, you don't change nothing. If if the plan works. Keep at it until it doesn't work anymore. Then come up with something different. But until then, use the game plan. Satan learned this lesson well. Trust me, he did. Revelation 13 and verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. And causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Just like uh, Elijah did when uh, in the book of Kings, when uh, he confronted Ahab and the prophets of Baal, or Baal, the uh, fire came down from heaven. Uh, let's see. I know that Elijah had the Lord call down fire from heaven at least three separate occasions that I can remember. Yeah. So this, uh, this one is going to, to mimic or, or uh, he's going to mimic what Elijah did. Matter of fact, I am of the strong personal opinion that the um, false prophet will call himself Elijah, claiming to be Elijah, uh, for the you know making the paths of the Lord, their Lord's you know straight. He's going to claim to be the forerunner to the Messiah, their Messiah, and he's going to mimic all the miracles of Elijah and what what's going to happen is you're going to have God's two witnesses that are going to confront the beast and the false prophet and the beast will uh, kill God's two witnesses that's recorded in scripture three days they'll be dead and then they'll be raised up on the third day and everybody's going to um probably going to need to change their pants if you catch my drift uh but he's uh that's kind of how i see things so and he the false prophet doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men now one of the false pro uh, i'm sorry one of the two witnesses of god one of them is going to be Elijah. Uh, the Bible records that. The Bible says, uh, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. I forget what book that's in, but it's in one of the minor prophets. It could be Joel or Malachi. I, I, I don't remember. I don't remember. can't remember everything. Bible's a big book. So, John the Baptist was like the shadow of Elijah. And uh, who's the second witness? Some people say Moses. Some people say Enoch. Because like Elijah, Enoch never died. Enoch was taken. Elijah was taken. So, those are your two guesses. Take your pick. Revelation 13, 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them. He deceives them. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image that they should make an image to the beast 
which had the wound by a sword and did live. Here we go, the image of the beast. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You know that word image of the beast appears four times in two verses? Uh, maybe we should pay attention to that. What do you think? All right, verse 5 of Ezekiel 8. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So he lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold northward at the gate of the altar, this image, image, image of jealousy in the entry. Ah, an image. And he said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations. What's an abomination? An abomination is a sin, evil, wickedness, that God really, 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 really hates. That's what an abomination is. Uh, sodomy is called an abomination. Witchcraft is called an abomination. Witchcraft means you're worshiping the devil, basically. Uh, if you're into witchcraft in the beginning, you may not know that it's Satanism. You may not know that at first. But by the time you've been in it a while, you will absolutely know it. Um, there's, there's no doubt about it. And sodomy... Sodomy is rebellion against God. God made male and female to complement each other. Sodomy is rebellion against God. And the Bible records that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You know what the penalty was for witchcraft? It was supposed to be death. Now we hire them for school teachers. Yeah. Yeah. And we elect them to uh, political offices. Yeah. Verse 6. He said, Furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here. What were they committing here? They're in the Lord's house committing these abominations. Seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. So what, the Lord's supposed to leave his own house so that they can practice Satanism? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Have you ever heard that expression, a hole in the wall? Comes from the Bible. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I have digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold, the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable, abominable beasts and all the idols and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. What kind of creeping things? Uh, dragons? I don't know. Probably. That's kind of how I look at it. So they got idols. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. Ancients. What are the ancients? 
they're the older, mature men. And the 70, um, the uh, you-know-whos record that the 70 are, is the Sanhedrin, the court. They were the ones that supposedly Moses put together because he couldn't judge all the millions of people of Israel. He couldn't do it. So his father-in-law, Jethro, said, uh, well, you know, what you need to do is appoint other people to hear things that you're too busy for. But what should be pointed out is that, to my knowledge, Moses never got approval from the Lord to do this. But uh, the Sanhedrin was the court, the Jewish court, that uh, condemned Jesus to death for blasphemy. Yeah, that's Sanhedrin. And from what I understand, the Sanhedrin exists today. Today is September 13, 2020. It exists today and has for a while. Uh, they call them the 70. So here it is. These are the high priests and the priests and all the Levites they're supposed to be the spiritual leaders of Judah. And what are they doing? Worshipping the devil. And there stood, verse 11, And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. So these are the Levitical priesthood that are supposed to be serving the Lord and they got the incense burners in their hands. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, for they say, the Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. In other words, eh, the Lord doesn't see what we're doing. And the Lord doesn't care anymore about what's going on here. I guess you could call that the Bob translation. Then said, uh, he said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Verse 14. All right, verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Now, this is, uh, Tammuz is, if I remember correctly, and I don't really want to look it up, it's, uh, involved with Mystery Babylon stuff. Basically, the mother and father, I, I can't remember everything, but uh, the mother and husband had a child and the, the father died and supposedly was reincarnated in the son. I don't know. Queen of Heaven stuff. Uh, you got Tammuz, you've got Semiramis, Isis, Ishtar, Lilith, uh, Easter, which was the spring goddess of fertility. Yeah, that kind of stuff. If I remember correctly, it was Nimrod who was the um, the father. And, of course, the Catholic Church, what do they do? They, they turn Mary into the Queen of Heaven. Yeah, I don't think so. But that's basically what this is all about. It's basically, uh, they're weeping for Tammuz, which is tied in with Easter. Yeah, no thank you. 
uh, depending upon which culture you lived in, the mother goddess had different names. And like I said, uh, Lilith, Ishtar, Easter, Semiramis, a bunch of different names. So, uh, Diana for the Greeks. Um, I forget that they got the Romans. They had the Egyptians. They all had similar stuff. But uh, Tammuz is tied in with the Easter, which was the spring goddess of fertility, of which they want us to believe that that was when uh, that represents Jesus rising from the dead. What do Easter eggs and bunny rabbits have to do with uh, Jesus rising from the dead? Uh, if anybody knows, let me know, because I have no clue. So, and I know I've said it before, but what is uh, what did Hugh Hefner's uh, Playboy bunnies, why did he pick that as the, uh, his symbol of his company? So, yeah. And behold, there, went, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Hmm. Verse 15. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. I mean, we're getting close to the Holy of Holies here, right? And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. And they worshipped the sun toward the east. No, they're not worshipping the Son of God. They're worshiping the S-U-N, the sun in the sky. Well, what does Easter have to do with all this? Uh, have you ever heard of Easter sunrise services? I've actually been to the beach on Easter morning on sunrise, and they had church groups there having their services. Easter Sunday sunrise services. That's what I always thought about when I read this verse. With their backs toward the temple of the Lord. Yeah, they, they turned their back on the Lord and their faces toward the east and they worshiped the sun toward the east. Yeah, let's give glory to the sun in the sky, not the sun, you know, not the sun of the Lord, the son of God. Verse 17. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence violence and have returned to provoke me to anger and lo they put the branch to their nose don't ask me I don't know I don't get the branch to the nose thing I, I just I don't think anybody has a good explanation for it that I you know the Bible doesn't really to my knowledge to my knowledge I could be wrong but I don't know what the branch to the nose meant. No idea. Verse 16, Therefore will I also deal in fury. Oh boy, here comes judgment. Here it comes. You wonder why the Lord sent them off to Babylon? 70 years, he wanted all the old folks dead. He wanted all the old folks that were doing this evil stuff to be dead that's why it was 70 years um i'm not sure what a generation is in the bible 
Uh, I'm not sure if it's 40 years or 70 years, but uh, I could probably figure it out, but it's you know not that important to me right now. But uh, all 70 years later, all the old folks were gone. All the old folks that did this garbage were dead. I'll guarantee it. They were all dead. And the Lord raised up a new generation to return to Jerusalem under the Persians, the Medes and the Persians, so that they could rebuild the house, the house of the Lord anew. So, verse 18. Therefore will I also deal in fury, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Well, the Lord's going to hear them, but he's not going to listen. Oh, hey, uh, you guys are in trouble? You got judgment coming? Cry to your, cry to the sun in the sky. See if he helps you. Cry for Tammuz. You know, figure it out. All right, everybody, that's the end of uh, this part of the temple series. This one really doesn't have a number. I should have done this a while, but, uh, a while back, but I missed it. So please forgive me. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.